I did a little bit of hiking this morning and I have the video camera pointed in the direction of Idaho Springs, or the downtown area of Idaho Springs. Doesn't show much, it's pretty far off there, but it's nice to get outside and do videos. This is my latest writing. I only distributed maybe oh about a hundred of these in the downtown area. I hit the merchants. One of the merchants suggested to me that he, I should do a paper. He wanted to see me do a paper against the banks. So this one along the top it says judgment against the court without the temple the banksters who had interest in building it and the gathering of Satan. The first picture shows the Israeli Sup Supreme Court building. I wrote funded by Rothschild banksters. The second picture shows the US Federal Reserve and I wrote run by Rothschild banksters and the last picture says Nesset building funded by Rothschild Banksters. And I'll go ahead and read this for you. This is a three page. Tisk tisk for shame for shame. Do you want to know what I'm honored to do to some bank robbers who paid off some court judges to get off? Well to their shock and horror I'm getting rid of their paid off judges through certain public example terror tactics. And then paybacks become a real bitch for some bank robbers who robbed a lot of U.S. taxpayers through their offshore investments. Romans 13, 3 and 4. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Now a lot of monopoly players, like Rothschild banksters, know that they don't want to let someone else be the banker who steals the money, right? Did you ever catch someone stealing the money when playing Monopoly? Well, I caught some people doing that, and what I do when that happens is end the game. I mean, Monopoly money isn't real currency anyways, is it? So who cares if the game gets ended so that U.S. taxpayers can stop paying tax for interest on other people's debt? So anyways, let's talk about a couple of revolting developments that some counterfeiters agreed with in 1913 called the Federal Reserve Act of 1913 and the Revenue Act of 1913. Any idea why they didn't just combine the two that year and call it the Tax of Bank Fraud Act of 1913? Because that's all it ever was. And I know how much U.S. taxpayers love to pay income tax so that little Rothschild banksters don't run out of lobster and starve to death. Another reason why U.S. taxpayers pay income tax is so the heathen of IRS Church can reject the words of Christ in Luke chapter 20 better on Sundays. Just stand a little further back so you can see all the Monopoly players in the game here, okay? It's just that they're playing on a real big game board of directors, like meat puppets for devils. And I think it's a good thing to know who all the players are in the game, don't you? I also think it's a good idea to get to know some of the things about the players in the game. So with that in mind, let's get to know some IRS church players who like to play on Sundays and reject the words of Christ regarding tax. You see, some chief priests and scribes once tried to deliver him to the power of their governor because he was making them look bad to the people they exploited. Luke 20, 20 to 26. 
And they watched him and sent forth spies which should feign themselves just men, that they might take hold of his words, so that they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. And they asked him, saying, Master, we know that thou sayest and teachest rightly, neither acceptest thou the person of any, but teachest the way of God truly. Is it lawful for us to give tribute unto Caesar or no? But he perceived their craftiness and said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Shew me a penny. Whose image and superscription hath it? They answered and said, Caesar's. And he said unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's, and unto God the things which be God's. And they could not take hold of his words before the people, and they marveled at his answer and held their peace. See how the IRS church players in the game reject Christ according to the book they twist the words of? If Christ, who obviously wasn't under their governor's authority, told the chief priests and scribes to render to Caesar the things that be his, then how can these modern day IRS church players use Luke chapter 20 to justify their money laundering government? while passing their adopted income tax onto their Sunday customers. Did you ever hear one of the IRS church players speak against the IRS while they're in bed with them? Gee, I really have fun beating down IRS counterfeit church for the real body of Christ. So who made other people's IRS church a Sunday social group of delusional idolaters anyway? Was it Pope Satan with dung smeared all over his face? Well, alrighty then. Now that we've learned some important information about some IRS church players in the game, let's consider how those ministers of advanced money laundering kiss synagogue of Satan ass. So let's see who they are. The synagogue of Satan players have been playing the game in a sort of covert way but in the open. What I mean is, when people can't see the forest for the trees, it's very much like when they can't see the synagogue of Satan for the rabbis that Christ said to be not called in Matthew 23, 8. And who kisses synagogue of Satan ass better than their Sunday mouthpieces, who call it Israel instead of what it is? I'll explain. When King Bibi, the false Jew Gentile, is into bombing Jacob Israel's generational seed and Palestinian labeled men, women, and children to death, then the synagogue of Satan is into murdering Israel. It don't take a rocket scientist that would be a prostitute to get research money to figure it out. So the synagogue of Satan's murder of Israel operation that they desperately want to keep covert has been kept pretty much covert for a while. With the help of their lesser Sunday stooges who call them God's chosen people. Well crap, what does an Italian, German, Irish, and Hungarian guy like me do if he's not one of God's chosen people according to Sunday IRS church? Should I go out and get a Jewish blood transfusion? Change my name to a good Jewish one, like David Berkowitz, the son of Sam killer, and murder women for fun like Berkowitz did in order to be one of God's chosen people? Or what if I went out and had sex with someone else's wife and then made sure her husband got dead over it, like King David did against Uriah? Notice how a lot of covetous, fornicating, blood money murderers and liars think that David was a wonderful guy? When I tell people the truth about what David did, many of them are very quick to respond and say, but God forgave him, when I never said he didn't and I never said he did. All I say is what David did. He numbered Israel from Beersheba to Dan for Satan. 1 Chronicles 21.1 And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. 1 Chronicles 21.7 And God was displeased with this thing, therefore he smote Israel. And David lied about the builder of God's house and courts also. And I'm saying 
that the Israeli Supreme Court of tax hooker law perverts that Rothschilds funded through fraud was never justified by God. If we really want to see an end to the U.S. Federal Reserve scam, then let's take an honest look at Rothschild's court investment that all got started through a very old lie of David and get rid of those Rothschild-owned judges that do business in their court. Let's compare what David, what God let David know according to what's written in 2 Samuel chapter 7 to what David claimed otherwise in 1 Chronicles chapter 28. God's message to David in 2 Samuel 7. When thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Okay, so now let's take a look at what David claimed, obviously before he slept with his fathers, which was contrary to what he was told about God setting up the seed after he slept with his fathers. First Chronicles 28, verses 4 to 6. Howbeit the Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler, and of the house of Judah, the house of my father, and among the sons of my father he liked me to make me king over all Israel. And of all my sons, for the Lord hath given me many sons, he hath chosen Solomon my son to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. And he said unto me, Solomon thy son, he shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. See what I was saying about before and after, and house and courts? Okay, so now let's take a look at what Peter has to say against David's claim. Acts 2, 29-32 Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. See the problem with David's claim before sleeping with his fathers about Solomon being the builder of house and courts, since this Jesus hath God raised up? Mark 13, 1 and 2. And as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here? And Jesus answering said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Did you notice how one of his disciples mentioned the manner of stones? Because the builders used the wrong manner of stones. And not one stone was left upon another that wasn't thrown down, just like he said would happen. 1 Peter 2, verses 3 to 7. If so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. So Christ is the living chief cornerstone. He's the head of a spiritual house made of lively stones, like me. But masons who don't build with lively stones put their counterfeit cornerstone in the corner of their temples made with hands. And that's exactly how they make the head of the church 
body of Christ out to be the head of the corner. Mark 12:10. And have you not read this scripture? The stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. So that's why Paul says, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. In Acts chapter 17. I get it. But teachers of IRS Sunday School often shy away from talking about God not dwelling in temples made with hands while they're blowing hot air in temples made with hands. Yeah, I don't think children should have to sit and listen to all their superficial fluff while adult hypocrites exploit them to serve their own gods, plural. Okay. So let's get back to the Monopoly game again and talk about the false judge's court without the temple, which is given to Gentiles, just like the false Jew, King Bibi, until they all go out of their high-paid court extortion business. Revelation 11, verses 1 and 2. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Now the holy city, according to Revelation, is New Jerusalem. But this is what happens to Old Jerusalem. Jeremiah 9.11 And I will make Jerusalem heaps, and a den of dragons, and I will make the cities of Judah desolate without an inhabitant. And I never learned that from IRS Church. So let's get to know these unconverted Gentiles better. Consider Paul's words to the saints at Ephesus who were converted from their former Gentile state of being through the inward circumcision of the heart and the spirit. Ephesians 2, verses 10 and 11. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh, made by hands. I myself was also in time past a Gentile, until my heart was circumcised in the spirit. Romans 2, 28 and 29. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. See how great the identity theft of Satan's Antichrist synagogue really is? Without the seed, which is Christ, all of them are just unconverted Gentiles. God's not a racist like some people are to their own destruction. And the blessing of Abraham was made for the people of all nations through faith which comes by hearing. Galatians 3 verses 8 and 9. In the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham saying in thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. And I thank God for that. All right, so the court without the temples, unconverted Gentiles, have now been identified. I'll briefly mention the Nesset Players building now. The Nesset investment of the international Rothschild Nazis is their Israeli parliament, which passes all their bullcrap laws. The word Nesset means gathering. And not so coincidentally, the word synagogue also means gathering. So let's just call it what it is, the synagogue of Satan. Because when representatives of the Antichrist religion called Judaism have seats in Rothschild's parliament building, then perverted laws get passed there through the influence of Antichrist religion. That's about all I have to say about those Nesset players for now. When their court without the temple goes completely out of business, they're done playing their part in the Monopoly game. And of course the IRS and Fed get to stop playing also. Besides, where are they going to send all that misappropriated Monopoly game money? 
when their foreign welfare recipients don't have a place to smoke crack in anymore. Luke 21 verses 20 to 22. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter into. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. And don't pay those money changer tithes to Sunday IRS Church. If you want to give to the poor, then give directly to the poor. And let's cut out the middlemen who rob the poor through charity front scams. And then I signed it, St. Michael, a public relations nightmare for some tax fraud people. Now I've probably, as I say, I've only distributed about a hundred of these downtown, but th this is the fourth writing, and I have another writing after this that I also started distributing that I haven't uh, mentioned on YouTube yet, or read on YouTube yet, but I've hit probably close to about half of the population in Idaho Springs. Anyway, so I'm getting a lot more done. I don't do, I haven't been doing a lot of videos uh, lately. Um, you know, I've been doing more local things, but uh, a lot of these people are picking up on this. I had uh, some young man uh, in his 20s um, stop by the house a couple days ago and say that his friends are, are getting it. They're understanding this. You know, and other people, uh, they don't even want a, a paper. They can't, they can't deal with it. I've had some people, not a whole lot of them, say they just don't want one of these papers because they got an initial one and <laughs> after they read it they just didn't want to deal with the truth I guess so this is what I was led to talk about I wanted y'all to know that I'm still doing stuff out here and thought I'd show you a little bit more of the surrounding area here I'll just pick this thing up. It was about 82 degrees at about 10 o'clock this morning. And over there, there's a snow-capped mountain top. And also, I happen to notice this down here cactus with flowers on it. So that's it.